back on Him. And we'll make the last days of your life, the last few years or however long you have left, we'll make it the best that it can possibly be. You'll have everything given to you. And He looked him in the face and said, the fire that you threatened me with will soon go out. But the fire that you're in, whew, hallelujah, the fire that you're in danger of is an eternal damnation, an eternal fire. Yeah. He has never done me anything but good. And I will not, I cannot recant or repent of my faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My, my, my. He has never done me nothing but good. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have a testimony tonight about Jesus Christ, that's the testimony it'll be. Oh, you might have felt sorry for yourself and had a pity party and thought God done you unfair, but if you really think about it, He's always had your best interest at heart. Amen. I believe the prophet of Jeremiah talks about how that the Lord's thoughts toward us are good thoughts, not evil thoughts. That He has good things in store for us to bring about the expected end that He has for our lives. I want to talk for just a few minutes tonight. I'm not going to talk for very long. I haven't preached in a couple of weeks. I should preach for an hour and a half, but I ain't going to. Hallelujah. Go with me to Romans, the uh, first chapter. The book of Romans, the first chapter. And uh, there's a lot of sermons over the years that uh, those of you who have heard a lot of sermons probably thought, well, that, was, that just wasn't for me. That was, must have been for somebody else. This is not one of those sermons. This sermon, these scriptures that we're going to talk about for a few minutes tonight, are for you and for me. For each and every one of us. This is something that hits home with everyone. I don't know anyone that doesn't have a problem with this in some form or fashion. Romans 1 and 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I want to talk a few minutes tonight about being thankful. I know you have a problem with it because I've heard you complain. You know I have a problem with it because you've heard me complain. The Bible puts a high premium on being thankful and thanksgiving and having gratitude. And it frowns severely on being ungrateful and unthankful. As a matter of fact, we waste our time and we don't have much time to waste whenever we sit around complaining and wallowing around in our sorrow thinking that God's not been fair to us and that what we have is not as good as what other people have. I don't know if I've ever heard any truer words than the words that Brother Hinton spoke that still are in my spirit today that you don't have to look very far to find someone that has it worse than you do. So whenever you go to complaining, remember those that don't have. When you complain about your legs hurting, remember those that don't have any legs. When you complain about your eyes hurting, remember those that can't see. Whenever you complain about your back hurting and Remember those that are bedridden and can't get up at all and that are in nursing homes and in the ICU unit with tubes down their throat and up their nose and unable to live on their own. Whenever you think that, well, you look around at the things you have and your place looks like Sanford and Son and the guy next door looks like he's got a lot of money and you complain about that, think about those that don't have anything at all. I seen the other day on the news where 172,000 people in Haiti still homeless because of the earthquake a couple of years ago. <clears throat> still homeless, and it showed some pictures of... And of course, if you know anything about Haiti, it's not a great living situation over there anyway. When Reese went over there years ago, and it's not got any better now, they had ditches that went down the middle of the town that were used for their sewer, and people living in houses made out of cardboard. And they showed pictures and film of that, and it broke my heart. To, think of those that have to live in, under those kind of conditions and then think about how I complain about what I have or what I don't have. Mm -hmm. It would behoove us all to think about whatever we think about what we don't have, to think about what we do have, <clears throat> to think about the roof over our head and the food that 
You can tell by looking at us tonight, none of us are starving to death. Right. And you see right. pictures of those little ones over there that have a bowl of rice a day. Their, their bellies are swollen, but it's not because they've had too much below me. It's because they're starving to death. Yet we complain if we don't have what we want to eat. And we're spoiled. When it comes right down to it, we're spoiled. When we, when we were growing up, and of course, I don't have stories like mom has mom some of the stories mom says you know I, I shake my head at and think that just that sounds horrible but when we were growing up we come a long way from that flit of bread and water gravy well I hadn't had no water gravy in how many years but when I was a kid I was glad to get it you asked mom what was for supper flit of bread you were glad to get flit of bread but we become so spoiled now that we feel like we're being left out. We don't, if we don't have not our needs but our wants, we feel as if we are being somehow shortchanged by God. Whenever He said that He would supply all of our needs according to His riches, and He does that, but sometimes that we act like that's not good enough, and we don't glorify Him as God, and we are unthankful in that, and that's what the Scripture is talking about. And like I said, the Bible puts great emphasis on being grateful and thanksgiving. And it condemns unthankfulness in a strong manner. Turn over to, to uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. We're talking about being thankful tonight. I don't know any of us that couldn't use a good dose of that. Sure. Amen. I'm sure we wouldn't have to think too hard to remember when we complained today. Because no doubt we complained about something. Second Timothy, and maybe you did, but if I was a betting man, I'd say you did yesterday. Because the old flesh is never satisfied, amen? Always got to have something. And if you see somebody else that's got something, you always want it. Second Timothy, the third chapter. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. We talk about the signs of the end of time. Listen what this here. Listen to these things that it says will be taking place in the last days. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Oh, that sounds terrible. What's that next one say? Unthankful. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false <coughs> accusers, incontinent, fierce. <laughs> despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So right here in the midst of this long list of things that we think, well, that's terrible. Those things are awful. Listen to some of the things that it names off. Look at it. There's heady, traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Talking about people that are Without natural affection. Truce breakers. That means they tell you one thing and do another. They make an agreement with you. They lie to your face. False accusers. They lie on you. Incontinent. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. And we think, wow, that's, that's some bad stuff. Unholy. That sounds pretty rough, don't it? And right in the middle of all of that, we find this word. Unthankful. <coughs> Unthankful. So I would say that this is no accident. I would say that God frowns on us being unthankful. I believe it grieves His heart to hear us complain and growl about what we don't have and spend more time doing that. Because see, that's what the devil wants you to do. He don't want you, Brother Junior, to look around and realize what you do have. He wants you to look around and think about what you don't have. Because if He can get you doing that, you'll have no gratitude. We'll have no thankfulness. Because we'll be too, we'll be so busy worried about what we don't have and how God treats the junior better than me. His car's nicer than me. His home's nicer than me. He has more stuff than I do. It's, if He can get us looking at that, yeah. instead of looking at the fact that we do have a car, we do have a place to live, we do have clothes on our back, we do have food on our table, then there'll be not, not a lot of gratitude found in our lives. Because we're always looking at what we don't have instead of what we do. 
And he throws that word unthankful right here in the midst of all these things that we think, well, that's terrible. All those things are bad. So is being unthankful. Being unthankful is not a good thing either. I heard a story, or I may have read it. I think I might have read it. We may even put it in the book. It's been a long time now. So I, he was talking about a man that was complaining about the load that he had to carry. And the writer of the story symbolized that by a cross and talked about the cross that the man had to carry being so heavy. And he just could, he just complained and he complained about how the load was so heavy. The cross that he had in his life was so heavy and he was so tired of carrying that until finally God said, Okay, son, come over here to this room. And he goes to this room and he opens the door, Brother Junior, and there's crosses all in this room. Great big place. So he sets his down there and the Lord says, you can go through here and pick out whatever cross you want. So he goes through there looks and he sees some that's big, some that's bigger, some that looks really rough and hard. And he finally comes to this one and he thinks, well, that, don't look, that one don't look nearly as bad as all these others. He says, Lord, I think I'll take this one. And the Lord says, son, that's the one you brought into the room. <laughs> That's the one you brought in. So see, whenever we look around, think about those that burdens are greater than ours. And it makes our load not seem quite so hard to bear. Amen? It makes us realize what we do have instead of what we don't have. When we think about those that are less fortunate or those that don't have as much. We walk around complaining what a what a horrible burden this is until we look around. We get our eyes off ourselves and look around and realize that others have it worse than we do. Yes, sir. Then we can find that gratitude. Proceed, being thankful is a choice. You don't do that because, well, I feel that way today. You do that because God's Word says to give thanks in all things for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You don't get up and say, well, I feel like being thankful today so I'm going to give thanks and praise to the Lord. No, you choose to do that. You choose to complain. We choose to complain. We choose to give thanks. Not by feeling. And we say, well, you know, that's easier said than done and it is. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, that's what I just tried to quote. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Easier said than done. Some people might say impossible, but not really. So how is this possible? <clears throat> Through faith in Him and His Word, because Romans 8 and 28, and y'all can quote this with my heart, I'm sure. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them, that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. So when we realize, when we really trust His Word, sometimes I believe we have a trust issue with God. Our flesh does anyway. Because if we really trusted what His Word says, we wouldn't kick so much against the things that come because His Word says all things <laughs> work together for good to them who are the called to them who love God are the called according to His purpose. So if you look at it like that, if you look at it the fact that His Word says to give thanks in all things, for this is His will. When you look at the fact, Mama, that His Word says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to His purpose. Then being thankful is not such a hard thing. It's a choice. We choose to believe that He will work all things for our good. I can't tell you the times that I have prayed, Lord, I don't understand this. Amen. I hope you don't look at me bad after this, but I've said, Lord, I don't like this. But I know that Your Word says all things work together for my good. And I, if, I, if I don't understand anything else, if I don't know that anything else around me, if, if it seems like everything else is just sinking sand and I can't stand it on anything else, I know that I can trust Your Word. And He said He will work it for my good. I don't understand it. Don't like it. Don't see how it's going to be good. 
But I know what His Word says. Yeah, that's right. Stand and on the Word. Stand on His Word. And Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but My Word shall remain. My Word will not pass away. You can trust His Word. The same Word that you're trusting in tonight for your salvation is the same Word that promises you that, that the righteous have never been forsaken and God's seed have ne has never begged for bread that He will take care of His people. He always has. He always will. You're not going to be the first one that He lets down. He will take care of us. Amen. That's right. No matter how bad things get, he will, now will things get bad? They may very well get really, really bad. I don't know how bad they're going to get before we get out of here. But I know what His Word says. I know that I've been through enough to know that He'll be enough for me. I know that He has came through so many times and that puts my heart at ease to know that His Word promises me that He will take care of me. See, my salvation is not dependent upon feeling. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't get up thinking, wow, I really feel saved today. No, I'm saved because I have faith in His Word. Faith in Him. Faith in His finished work. Faith in what He has done. Knowing that His Word says, if I believe on Him, I have everlasting life. <clears throat> Knowing that His Word teaches me, if I put my faith in Him, and nothing else, that I am saved, I am born again. I don't doubt that. Oh, the devil might come around sometime and try to talk to you about it. But if you have faith in His Word, you don't doubt that. You know that you are saved. It always worries me whenever people say, well, if I can just make it in by the skin of my teeth. If I, I, just, want, I just want to barely make it in. Well, you don't have to barely make it in. If you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved, period. You're not going to be any more saved tomorrow than you are today. If you have faith in Him, you are saved right now. And heaven is your eternal home. You don't have to leave that up to chance and think, well, I hope I make it. No, you'll make it with faith in His Word. Same thing goes with all the other circumstances that come into our life. God will take care of us. Yes, amen. And we will find it not so quite a hard road to hoe being thankful whenever we realize what His Word says and we put our faith in that knowing that He has us in the palm of His hand and that whatever comes and whatever goes, He will take care of us. Because listen, this life is only a vapor. It appears for a little while and then vanishes away. That's right. The most important thing tonight is your soul and the condition of your soul and your relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the things that we go through in this, world, in this life are just temporal. They will soon fade away. They will soon be gone. And the most important thing will be your relationship with Jesus and what you did for God. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. Not, not the money that you left in the bank. Not the car. Not the clothes. The church puts a high premium on that. The world does and the church does too because they look at you different. If your clothes come from the Goodwill than they do if they came from J.C. Penney's or Macy's. But God don't. God don't care about that stuff. No, no. You don't impress God with your bank account. No. You don't impress God with your $5,000 Armani suit. You might impress man, but you don't impress God. God looks past all that frivolous stuff that's going to pass away. And He looks for a heart of gratitude and thankfulness for His will. And that He will do what He said He would do in His Word. There are many, many scriptures in the Word of God. And you don't have to go to these because I'm going to give these to you real quick. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Colossians 2 and 7 says, Rooted and, build, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Colossians 4 and 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Jonah, in his prayer from the belly of the whale, said, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. King David wrote in the book of Psalms many, many things about thanksgiving. He said, That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving 
and tell of all thy wondrous works. Psalms 50 and 14 says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Psalm 69 and 39, or 69 and 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify Him with thanksgiving. Psalms 95 and 2 says, Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with songs. Over and over and over again, the Word of God teaches us to be thankful. And if you're waiting to feel that special thanksgiving feeling so that we can worship Him and praise Him, then we're waiting on the wrong thing. Right. Because whether we're thankful should not depend upon what's going on in our life. We should not find ourselves more thankful because we're on the mountain mm -hmm. than we are when we're in the valley. Because the same God that we're giving thanks to is the same God, whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're in the valley, He's still God. Nothing has changed. That's right. You may wake up tomorrow and face a trial that you didn't face today. But circumstances change, but God does not. He's the same. Always. I don't know about you, but my, I need to pray, Lord, help me to be more grateful. Help me to be more thankful. I'm going to read you this that we read. I think the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, but I want to read it to you again tonight. Today upon a bus, I saw a lovely maiden with golden hair. I envied her so beautiful, and how I wished I were so fair. When suddenly she rose to leave, I saw her hobble down the aisle. She had one foot and wore a crutch, but as she passed, she wore a smile. Oh God, forgive me when I whine, I have two feet, the world is mine. And when I stopped to buy some roses, the lad who served me had such charm. He seemed to radiate good cheer, his manner was so kind and warm. I said, it's nice to deal with you, such courtesy I seldom find. He turned and said, Oh, thank you, sir. And then I saw that he was blind. Oh, God, forgive me when I whine. I have two eyes, the world is mine. Then when walking down the street, I saw a child with eyes of blue. He stood and watched the others play. It seemed he knew not what to do. I stopped a moment, then I said, Why don't you join the others, dear? He looked ahead without a word, and I realized he could not hear. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two ears. The world is mine. With feet to take me where I go, with eyes to see the sunsets glow, with ears to hear what I would know, I am blessed indeed. The world is mine, oh God. Forgive me when I whine. That's my prayer tonight. Lord, forgive me when I whine. When things don't go my way, help me to be more thankful. Someone else tonight have something before we go.